Hi everyone, in this video we'll be looking at level annuities, more specifically where cash flows are played at discrete time points. And in this video I will show you how to accumulate or discount and find the present value of a series of cash flows. Let's recap what we've seen before. We know how to calculate our accumulation factor using an effective interest rate of I. We know what our discount factor looks like. We've seen what our rate of discount looks like and how it relates to I and V. And we've got this triangle that neatly summarizes the relationships. We can work out the present value of a single cash flow of C that's paid at time N and we can work out the present value now. Similarly, if we had a rate of discount or compound rate of discount, we could use it as follows. Now, when we're looking into the future and calculating future values, the future value of an amount C can be accumulated two time in as follows. And using a rate of discount, we can use this formula and notice the negative N. Now, when we're working in continuous time, we will use the functions as follows. They work very similarly to what we've seen before, but be careful and note here that the force of interest that we're using, the delta, is constant. And that is why we have these relationships that related back to our common interest rate of I or our effective interest rate of I. And we've seen the relationship between delta and I. So now let's look at an annuity. An annuity is defined as a series of regular payments and a series basically means you have more than one payment and regular payments mean that the payments are made consistently at fixed intervals so if payments are made yearly they happen every year if they happen monthly they happen every month so you're not in a situation where some months are skipped out it's consistent it's regular so if you have an example where we have x we will see that x is paid at each time point and in this timeline we've got n payments of x now these payments can be level they can be increasing or decreasing a level payment is one that is the same throughout so each of the regular payments that are made are all the same in this case they're all x now if you have for example increasing payments each payment that is made is greater than the subsequent payment. So for example, you could have X, then 2X, then 3X, and so on. These would be increasing payments. Now these payments, while they do happen regularly, they can happen either at the start or at the end of each interval. So if our period or our interval is one year, then the payment can be made at the start of the year or at the end of the year. And we call this payments that are made in this at the start. We call these payments made in advance. And if the payment is made at the end of the period, it's made in arrears. It's important to understand this because these will affect how we discount or accumulate our cash flows. The last thing that defines an annuity is the condition. So payments are made as long as a certain status is valid. It means it depends on something. And this can vary between a whole bunch of different things. And it depends on the example. So the following are examples of annuities. A loan repayment. If a loan is repaid, it's generally paid over a period of time. And the, lo the loan installments are generally level or they're the same. Typically, they depend on the current interest rate if they're linked to a variable interest rate. But sometimes they can be fixed. A voluntary purchase annuity is one where you exchange a sum of money and in return you receive a whole bunch of cash flows that are paid over a certain period of time. A retirement life annuity is one where at retirement an individual will purchase a life annuity. Now a life annuity depends on the person's being alive at the time. So the, the annuity will only make payments so long as the person is alive and this is where the condition comes in, the status. So the status here is the person's life. Once a person passes on, the annuity stops. So when you try to work out the present value of all of those payments, it depends on the person being alive. And that's where the probability of the person being alive at that time point is so important. We can also use annuities for regular investments or regular savings. So now we will focus on annuities that are 
a series of regular payments that are level. So we'll first look at the case where all the payments are level. They either made at the end or the start of the period. In other words, they either made in a in advance or in arrears, and the condition is certain. In other words, these are annuities certain. So if, if, if someone refers to an annuity being certain, it means that all the cash flows will be paid with a probability of 1 or 100%. Okay, so when looking at cash flows and trying to find the present value of a series of cash flows, we start off with our timeline. Now we've specifically drawn the cash flows at the end of the period. So these cash flows are paid in arrears. And we can see that they are level cash flows. They are all the same, they're all CF. They're paid regularly at the end of each year for N years. And we can see that they are also in cash flows. So to write out the present value, we would simply discount each cash flow back to time zero. And this would look something like this we can see that our last cash flow is made at time n, so it's discounted back to time zero for n years, and our first cash flow is made at time one, so that's just discounted back for one year. Now we can see that we have a common factor of the, the cash flow being the common factor, and we can pull that out, and we now have the term in the brackets. This is why it's important for the cash flows to be level, otherwise we wouldn't be able to pull out a common factor. So with the cash flow pulled out as a common factor, we've got the terms that are in the brackets. We can call this B. So B represents the series of discount factors. Now, we can then take B and we multiply by 1 plus I. So this is the trick we're going to use in order to actually work out a formula for the annuity. We take B and we time multiply by 1 plus I. And we'll see that this will give us another series of terms the first v cancels out and we're left with one and then we have v and all the way to v in minus one now the next trick is to take our, our second series or number two and subtract one from it and what this means is that we'll be in we'll end up with one minus v because all the terms except one and vn will cancel out and on the left hand side, we've got the terms BI because the two B's cancel out and you're left with BI. So rearranging everything such that you have just have B, you end up with B equal to 1 minus VN over I. And this means that our present value is simply the cash flow times 1 minus VN over I. And this 1 minus VN over I is actually our annuity function or our annuity factor and we've given this a notation of a to the n as follows more formally this is the present value of a level annuity certain of one paid in arrears for n periods so you've got n payments of one and this is the annuity so we can also look at the case where cash flows are paid in advance instead of in arrears. So the cash flows would start at time zero and end at time n minus one. And here cash flows are obviously paid in advance at the start of each period. Now, how many cash flows do we have here? We will see that we have n cash flows. What is our period? n years. So if we had to work out the present value of this cash flow stream, we would write it out as follows, where the first payment is made at time naught, so we don't really have to do any discounting, and our last payment is made at time n minus one, so we discount it back n minus one years. Now again, we pull out CF as our common factor, and we end up with the terms in the brackets, and let's call this C. So with C as follows, we then use the trick by multiplying C by V. And if we do this, our first term becomes V and our last term becomes VN. Then the next trick is to take the first line and, and then subtract the second line from it. 
So 1 minus 2, and you end up with 1 minus Vn. And then on the left-hand side, you end up with C times 1 minus V. And rearranging, you end up with C is equal to 1 minus Vn over 1 minus V. We know that D is equal to 1 minus V, so we can substitute D in for 1 minus V. And this becomes our annuity due formula where payments are paid in advance for a period of n years. So a sense check, just plugging in some numbers to see what these annuity values end up looking like. If you've got an interest rate of 6% per annum effective, cash flow of 100 and a term of n years, we can calculate each of the annuity factors. We find if the annuity is paid in arrears, we, we end up with a factor of 11.46, but if it's paid in advance, we end up with a factor of 12.15. Now what this means is, if we multiply 100 by that to actually work out the full present value of those series of cash flows, we can see that the series of cash flows that are paid in advance, the present value is higher. And why is that? Well, logically you can think of it like this. When the payments are made in advance, all the payments are effectively made one year sooner than compared to payments made in arrears. So they have more time to earn interest, in which case they have a higher present value. So we have looked at calculating the present value of an annuity. Now we can also look at accumulating cash flows and finding the future value of a series of cash flows. In other words, the future value of an annuity. In this case, we've got our cash flows that are also made in arrears. We've got n cash flows and we want to find the future value at time n by accumulating each of these cash flows. We can write out our future value by effectively accumulating each cash flow to time n. So the first cash flow needs to be accumulated for n minus 1 years. The last cash flow happens at time n, so no accumulating is necessary for that one. All in all, we can pull out our cash flow as a common factor and we're left with the terms in the brackets. We can now call this D. So we have D as follows and we need to use a trick. The trick is taking D and multiplying it by 1 plus I. Multiply, multiplying it by 1 plus I effect, effectively gives us a first term of 1 plus I to the power N and a last, the last term of 1 plus I. Then we take line 2 and we sub, li, subtract line 1 from it. And we end up with 1 plus i to the power n minus 1. On the left hand side, we end up with di. And taking the i over, we end up with d is equal to 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 all over i. This d, which is equal to 1 plus i to the n minus 1 over i, is the accumulated value of an annuity that's paid in a year over n years. And more formally, it's the future value or cumulative value of a level annuity certain that is of one that's paid in arrears for n periods. And you'll notice in the timeline below, the first payment is made at time one and the last payment is made at time n. And we want to calculate the future value at time n. It's always a good idea to have a visual representation of when the cash flows are made and when you are at what time point you are calculating the future value. Now if payments are made in advance we can do a very similar thing. Here we've started off with our timeline which covers the period of n years and the cash flows are made at the start of each of the periods. How many cash flows are there? We see there are n cash flows and we can calculate the future value at time n by using the following formula. Our first cash flow is made at time 0, so it needs to be accumulated for n years. Our last cash flow is made at time n minus 1, so it only needs to be accumulated for one year. If we pull out CF as our common factor, we end up with the terms in the brackets. And let's call this E. Again, we write out E and we then apply a trick to it by multiplying it by V. 
what v does is gives us the first term of 1 plus i to the n minus 1 and the last term of 1. Then we take 1 and we subtract 2 from it. 1 minus 2 is equal to 1 plus i to the power n minus 1. And on the left hand side, we're left with e times 1 minus v. We then move that 1 minus v over and we are, we are left with 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 divided by d. And this is the accumulated value of an annuity that is paid in advance for n years. Always remember that d is equal to 1 minus v. So more formally, this is the future value of a level annuity certain of 1 paid in advance for n periods. And notice in the timeline below that the first cash flow is made at time 0 and the last one at time n minus 1 and that you are calculating the future value at time n. Sometimes people confuse this and they think we're calculating the future value at time n minus 1, but we are not. So looking at our key takeaways, we can see the following two formulas for the present value of a level annuity that is paid either in arrears or in advance. We've got a period of n years. In the first one, we're using an effective interest rate of i per period in the denominator. And in the second one, we're using d in our denominator. So the only difference between the two formulas is the denominator. Then we've got the future value of a level annuity, either in arrears or in advance. And again, the differences between these two formulae is only the denominator, where the one has i and the other one has d. Now, coming to our top tips, always remember to use a timeline to identify your cash flows. It'll help you to know whether the cash flows are paid in advance or in arrears. It'll also tell it'll also help you to figure out at what time point, what is your reference time point for where you want the present value or future value. Sometimes you are asked to calculate the present value at a different time point that's not time zero, or you're asked to calculate the future value at a time point that's not the end of the period. So it's always important to use a timeline so that you don't make mistakes. Now another top tip is trying to find the relationships between your annuities and arrears and your annuities in advance. And this is a relationship between the annuity in arrears and the annuities in advance. And obviously this relationship can be used both ways. You can simply move the V to the other side and you'll, you'll be using one plus I. So basically if you've got the one, it's very easy to calculate the other one by simply using V or simply using I, one plus I. So over here, if you've got cash flows that are paid in arrears and we calculate the present value, we simply discount them all to time zero. But should we want to find the future value at the end of the period, we can also just accumulate them using our annuity, our, our, prop, our annuity accumulation formula. But we can also just take up the present value and accumulate it two time n in one go. And this is how we have this relationship of year where they are both equivalent. So if you've already calculated the present value, for example, it's very easy for you to calculate the future value at time n because you can just use one plus i to the power n. For n greater than two, this relationship holds as well. And this may be useful in a variety of different cases and it's worth remembering. And it can be proved by simply writing out all the terms. That brings us to the end of the video. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and share the video with your friends.